Hey, what's up, guys? Private teacher, take two. I'll explain in the end. Welcome to Barefoot and Independence Squeaky Clean Adult Films. I'm Jason. I'll be your guide through this little ditty. So Honey Wilder plays Aunt Diane. Tom Byron plays Little Jimmy. Kay Parker. Cue the teacher. Privately. She is Miss Foxworth. She is the teacher. The private teacher. 1983. Okay, so Jimmy just wants to be alone. He only wants privacy, and he gets a private teacher. But Aunt Diane, she doesn't want him to be alone in his room. What is he doing? He really, he's just, has his uh, telescope out, and he's looking at nature, you know? I could think of worse things for a young teenager to be doing. And part of the allure, I think, of this film is that Tom Byron actually played off being a kid. So when you saw this as a kid, you were seeing yourself in a movie. An interesting way to see yourself. He's directed a bunch of stuff, but he was known for being a DP cinematographer. I always thought his name was Gary Garver. I guess the letters got switched around in my head, and I don't know how to pronounce it. Gary Graver? Good friend of Orson Welles, 231 credits in his director of photography, IMDb. That's crazy. He shot some of the best films, some of my favorite films. I love exploitation cinema. That's why I'm drawn to these. You cut all the hanky-panky out, what you're left with is basically an exploitation film. Speaking of, this guy, Gary, he shot the Toolbox Murders. The Satan Sadist with Russ Tamblin from Twin Peaks. Invasion of the B-Girls. The Naughty Stewardesses. Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> directed by Ron Howard. This guy was a power DP. Literally, look, look his, his IMDb up. This guy is my role model. The B I bought this in the budget for my second feature-length film, The Boy That Dripped Blood. Way back then, I couldn't find the entire picture online. You could find tons of scenes. But what I was interested in was that intro. The intro to this is so weird. It's educational. You learn. I didn't know where the first McDonald's was, and now I know. When she sang a bunch of people flock to here, I stole this. Go go watch the intro to my second feature. It's called The Boy That Drip Blood. It's an exploitation film. People from Celine constantly flocked to Tecumseh. Like, I was doing this little uh, a love letter to a town. This film is definitely a love letter to a town. Kind of a state, because they bounce a little around Cali. I think this is probably the most popular adult film of all time. It's not on many lists for the most popular, but everyone had this. All my parents, my parents had it. All, all my friends' parents had private teacher. I remember once Don and I went to St. Louis, we're sitting around in Missy's uh, living room. I'm looking at her VHS collection underneath her wooden box TV frame, private teacher. It's everywhere. I looked it up on a few websites, millions of views. One has 4 million views, a couple have 1 million views. All of them have half a million views. And I think it's because of Janie Robbins. Personally, the last scene in the picture is the most popular scene. Look how many times that's been clipped and just uploaded. Just that. Honey and Janie. Janie Robbins, once again, giving us that Michigan accent. Man, I love the way she speaks. I actually talked a lot about Private Teacher on the Summer Camp Girls intro. If you're interested in Janie, then go check that out. Honey Wilder's in it as well. Amazing music by Horizon. Man, that, that theme. I'm going to isolate this and send this to my team because I would like to redo this or have something in the vein. Actually, I would like a, I would like a just a straight up remake. That's not too original, huh? But that's how much I love this music. A lot of good music cues. Unfortunately, you're not going to hear a lot of them. But the main little synth theme over the town, it plays three times in this movie, intro and outro, and then just like a weird interstitial thing in the middle. This film is, is hilarious. There is so much humor in it. I highly suggest you go out and get the original. If you don't already have it, go borrow it from your parents. They have it. It's just a lot of the, a lot of the humor. That's why I'm saying in the OG one that you're not going to see. There's so much humor and innuendo. Uh, there's a few things left, like is he shrinking and the, the neighbor's line that makes Jimmy laugh. We went from 85 minutes down to 21 minutes. We also went from X to G. 
So I went to a percentage calculator. We left 24.71% of this motion picture. That's a big, it's a big difference. The old introduction to this film, we're going to put it at the end of the movie because I don't want to add 68 seconds to this already too long of an intro. All right, let's watch it. I'm going to be in the end as well. This is the promised land, Los Angeles, California, the city of sunshine, milk and honey. Millions of people have flocked here to make Los Angeles their home. Aircraft workers, Arabs, movie stars, hustlers, butchers, bakers, preachers. This is the home of the original McDonald's. Brahmins Chinese Theater, Griffith Observatory, Alvera Street, Santa Monica Pier, the Beverly Hills Hotel, the La Tosca Theater, home of foreign films, Marina Del Rey, Freeways, Taylor the Pup Restaurant, the Church of Amy Simple McPherson, Chinatown, Union Station, the Coliseum, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. MacArthur Park. The Canals of Venice. And Hollywood. Yes, Hollywood. The past is fading away. And the sweet little neighborhood of Hollywood is gone. Over these mountains and to the north of Los Angeles and Hollywood is the San Fernando Valley. It is made up of many communities, inhabited by mostly middle American families. This is where the normal people live. You've been a bad, bad rabbit, Warren. I'm reading, Aunt Diane. Jimmy, open this door. Please, Aunt Diane. Is something going on in there? No. Well, it's awfully quiet. I'm reading. I don't hear any pages turning. You open this door. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting really worried about you, Jimmy. Why? I'm your aunt. It's my right to worry, okay? I'm not doing anything. That's exactly what worries me. You're not doing anything. You just mope around this room all the time. I just want to be by myself. Well, something's fishy. Don't try to fool me. I'm not! Not so sure. Hmm, let's go back to your reading. I don't see any book. I put it away. Hmm. Supper's in one hour. We'll talk about it then. I've got a surprise for you. I've got a surprise for you. Jimmy, these past few weeks have become very different in this house. Now, I know I'm your aunt. I'm not your mother. God rest her soul. But I am raising you. I pay the bills. I'm feeding you. I'm responsible. And your behavior has become very peculiar lately. I'm just the same. No, Jimmy, you are not just the same. You've been staying in your room for hours like some old recluse. You're absolutely hell to get up in the morning. And your teacher called and said that you've been falling asleep in class when you make it to class. Now, what is it in your room 
that occupies you so? I'd really like to know. Well, aren't you going to say anything? What a meeting. Why don't you just tell me your problem? Mustard. Mustard. Could you pass the mustard, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Now, be serious, Jimmy. Serious? Yes, you don't seem to be realizing that you're crawling into a shell. I mean, you are just retreating from the essence of life. You're not acting like a normal young man. I just want to get more reading done. It's not reading. It is something, but it is not reading. You're just too quiet. Absolutely too quiet. Now, what is it? Nothing. It is not nothing. I am tired of having this same discussion. Now, if you don't snap out of it, I am just going to have to take some drastic measures. Are you listening to me? Yes, Aunt Dan. You know, you don't go outside. You don't play sports like you used to. You don't go to the movies. You don't chase girls. You don't even watch television anymore. <coughs> the worst part is you and I don't have the conversations like we used to. Spending hours upon hours in your room, don't you think that's just a little bit strange? What are you reading in there? Playboy magazine? No. Then what is it? Nothing. Nothing. Young man, your nothing is going to turn into something. And when it does, you're going to need some professional counseling. I'm going to my room now. Uh, thanks for dinner, Aunt Diane. Don't you want to watch the Jeffersons with me? No, thanks. Don't you want any dessert? No! Tonight's program of the Jeffersons will not be seen at this time. Instead, we are presenting a special white paper report, Update. All throughout America today, all Americans can now have fun. And all this is very good and healthy for you. But just look at this TV. I will give you a home demonstration. I think it would be easier if I come out there. Oh, my. Why 
Why do you wake me up so early on a Saturday? I don't have to go to school. Oh, yes, you do. What do you mean? School is coming to you. To me? Yeah, I told you I was going to have to take drastic measures. Look, you seem to be emotionally paralyzed. I mean, you're slipping into an almost comatose state. And I'm not going to let you get sick. So I have engaged a private teacher. She's going to come here and she's going to help you with your mental problems as well as your schoolwork. She's a qualified professional and she comes very highly recommended. I don't need anybody like that, Aunt Diane. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, you know, like the old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. <laughs> well, your actions or non-actions are real strange. I just want to be alone. All the time. You can't fool me. Well, good morning. You must be... Yes, Jimmy's teacher. Wonderful. Jimmy, please come. I want you to meet the lady who's going to be helping you. This is Miss Foxworth. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Nice to meet you. Please, let's come in and sit in the living room. My, you have a lovely home. Thank you. We like it. The neighborhood's quite nice. Very quiet and private. We hardly even ever see the neighbors. <laughs> Did I say something funny, Jimmy? No, I just remembered an old joke. Well, at least your memory isn't fading. Jimmy, I'm sure your aunt has told you why I'm here. Yes. Diane, as I explained to you, I must work with him alone. I understand. I have my sales meeting in Palm Springs. So you two will have a nice long weekend together to work on Jimmy's problems. I don't have any problems. Now, Jimmy, I think I should be the judge of that. I have several degrees in psychology, and I've had a lot of experience in dealing with the human mind. Now, if, as your aunt has pointed out, you are slipping into a reclusive state, I'm the one to help you. But I'm not. I just want my privacy. Well, now, Jimmy, uh, it seems to be a little bit more serious than that. What did you tell her? Just exactly what's been going on. Now, Diane, I don't think Jimmy's problem is that serious. Just give me a couple of days with him, and I'm sure we can solve the whole thing. Let's not put him on the defensive. You're the boss. No, you're the boss. I'm the psychologist, and he's still very dependent upon you for his livelihood. Now, whatever feelings Jimmy has about his environment, he will tell me about them. Thank you. May I go to my room now? See, he's doing it again. Yes, Jimmy, you can go. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I'll get my bags and be gone soon. Have a good weekend, Jimmy. Yeah, sure. This might be tough, Diane. I think he's shrinking. You mean you think he's getting smaller? <laughs> no, dear, his personality. But don't worry about a thing. I'm sure I can snap him out of it. I trust you, Miss Foxworth. Lillian. Lillian. Now, you just run along on your business meeting, and I'll take care of everything. Thank you. You're sure? Yes, dear. Trust me. I do, Lillian. Thank you.
I don't think they're home. Look, I'm telling you, when these stewardesses are on layover, they're always here. You sure about this? Hey, look, you know, what, what, how many times do I have to tell you? They're here. You, can have, you just gotta relax. Yeah? Jimmy, you'll have to come out now. We must have a little talk. Not now. I didn't come all the way over here for my health. All right. Hmm? Come on out into the house and we'll talk. Okay. Jimmy. Thanks, but it's my house. So it is. Do you want me to leave? My aunt asked you to come here. Yes, she did. Now let's start talking. Now I know you don't want to answer... Let me rephrase that. I know you won't answer my questions. You're hiding something from your aunt. Now from what I can tell, you are not mentally ill. You have a secret. Now, I know you probably wouldn't want your aunt to know what your secret is, but maybe you'll share it with me. There's no secret. Do you like your aunt, Jimmy? Sure, she's great. What school do you go to? Valley Junior College. Any problems there? No. So, no secrets and no problems. That's right. Can I go to my room now? Sure. we have an understanding or a lie since you have no emotional problems and no physical problems we might as well get down to some regular schoolwork Shakespeare Shakespeare the most brilliant writer of English literature his works can only improve your mind it's old-fashioned read Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it, trippingly on the tongue. Now, no, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, you can understand this and put a little more feeling into it, can't you? Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had us leave the town crier spoke my lines. Now do not soar the air too much. Well, Diane, I think Jimmy will be just fine now. Well, you really seem to have worked a miracle. Mm, maybe. You sure he's going to be all right? You see. Call me in a couple of days. What about the money? The agency will send you a bill. Well, thank you. I'm really going to hope for the best. Aunt Diane? Yes, Jimmy? Uh, what's for dinner? Oh, I thought we might go out. Oh, great. Oh. Uh, Miss Foxworth, will you come with us? Sorry, Jimmy. I've been gone all weekend. Gotta feed the cat. 
Okay. Oh, and Jimmy, remember your Shakespeare. I'll never forget it. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the matan to be near, and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Remember me. What was that all about? You wouldn't understand. No, maybe you would. Are you sure you saw him come in here? I saw him right out my back window. That was hours ago when it was just starting to get dark. But he never stays out this late. Diane, haven't you been having problems with him? Yes, but I thought that was all cured. I mean, he wouldn't come out of his room. <laughs> and now he won't come home. <sighs> Who lives here anyway? Two airline stewardesses. Seem like normal girls. <sighs> well, there doesn't seem to be anybody home now. The door is open. Let's go in. Come on. And so, as the sun sinks slowly in the west, we say a fond farewell to Los Angeles, the land of milk and honey, the big orange, Smogsville, the land of opportunity where anything can happen. And usually it does. 24 hours a day. Hey, did you guys like that? I love it. I enjoyed making it for you. I know it's significantly different. Gary Garver is not his name. Gary Graver did a wonderful job writing and directing this picture. They'll love me when I'm dead. I'm going to have to rewatch They'll Love Me When I'm Dead. Because if Gary worked on The Other Side of the Wind, that means that he is literally in the Love Me When I'm Dead. Check it out. They're both on Netflix. If you like Orson Welles, if you like film history, and especially if you like experimental cinema, go check both of those out. So my first attempt at this a couple days ago, uh, I didn't care that I had paint and drywall on me. Let's talk about that at the end of the picture. But the camera went soft. It didn't go out of focus. It just went slightly out of focus. You know what soft means. So I'm sitting there editing it, thinking I'm getting older, going, what? And I just realized that it was out of focus. Slightly soft, if you will. <laughs> Appearances aside, I am really going to give this one my full force. Honestly, one of my favorite films. We got demonetized again, 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 third time. So this is film number two of 101. We got a lot more to go. I'm going to jump in the shower and I'm going to come back a little better than this. And we're going to do another one. Sorry, YouTube, but we are going to, to your standards, we are going to release so many motion pictures in the next 30 days. All our stuff has to be manually reviewed. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Someone's watching this right now. And I'm so sorry that we just turned in 101 films. I love this film. I owned it on VHS. I owned it on DVD. I have a digital copy of it. Here's a funny thing about this one. There's three powerhouses involved. YouTube. Google and Barefoot and Independent. Barefoot might be a little higher than those two. Barefoot, YouTube, Google. This this film has been monetized for years. Not only is this the second intro I'm doing, this is the second rendition of it. I listened to it and I was like, whoa, that can't be in there. Whoa, I left that. Just It's just language. Apparent, obviously nothing bad was in it. But boy, did I leave some choice language. That's out now. Now it's a true G like Snoop. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. We liked it. And yeah, that's it. Sorry that you're going to get a lot of me lately. I'm doing all 101. Bummer for you guys. Okay, the old intro to this picture is going to be at the end. I don't want to add an ah. Oh. <laughs> the end of this. Get it together, buddy. Hey guys, we're here to talk about repurposing some content. Today, we're gonna to be doing G-rated. We are making it original and our own and educational value to this. You know why? Because adult films are triple X. And so we've flipped it, completely made it our own, made it G-rated. Oh, I've been hearing people talk about 
uh, private teacher for years. You know, I've seen all these clips for it online. You can, I mean, you can see clips from all of these these films on YouTube, but now you can see them in a cohesive story. The adult films of the 70s are amazing. Usually shot on film, they are story driven, and they're very cool from a cinephile's point of view. It's the film, just rated G. They took a long time, and I hope you enjoy them. Cigarettes, gone. Swearing, gone. Nudity, of course. Everything's gone. We made a G rated for you. We did it for you. For educational purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, private teacher. Don't you want to watch the Jeffersons with me? No, thanks. You want to play flashlight?